Many voters across America waking up today still trying to process last night's CNN presidential debate. One candidate sparking concerns about his age and the other repeating falsehoods instead of facts. A lot to unpack about what happened. Joining us this morning is a political strategist, Matt Clink. Matt, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the headline everywhere, and I think this headline started to come out even during the debate, uh, is, is that President Biden struggled. Um, he had hoped, his campaign had hoped he would debunk the sort of the caricature of him that the Trump supporters had put out that he's a feeble old man who couldn't possibly be president. But President Biden not only didn't make that image go away, he seemed, in the view of many people, to amplify it. Is he in trouble? Big trouble. Uh, the bar was low. Don't forget, he prepped for an entire week for this. And you could see him walking out. He looked feeble. And then when he first started talking, his voice was raspy. He rambled. Throughout the debate, he looked at the floor. A couple times, he froze up. For, this is not something that inspired. And he, Biden had two tasks last night. He either had to aggressively fight Donald Trump or he had to inspire America. He did neither. It was a complete disaster for the president. Matt, this morning, Biden's campaign says he is not dropping out. He plans to attend the second debate. So he's been promised another debate in September. It would be unprecedented for the Democratic Party to ask an incumbent president to step aside weeks before the convention happening in Chicago in August. Yeah. Is there time for some, someone to step up if he does at some point decide, you know what, I'm not going to run? in 2024 and then would something even possibly happen on the convention floor is that a possibility yeah jessica we're using this term a lot in politics right now which is kind of scary as unprecedented yeah i think what's going to happen is the biden campaign is going to say bad night i'm going to continue to go on and inspire people and move forward wait until some of the polls come out about right. debate reaction and if joe biden's numbers tank I think then the, the freak out that's happening among the political class in Washington will get bigger. And at that point, they'll talk about it. The problem, though, is that the delegates are committed to Joe Biden. So he would have to he would have to pull out and then you would have an open convention. And it would be I mean, it would be a lot of fun for people like me mm. to speculate and comment, but never happened before. If so, but if he doesn't pull out himself. Could there still be an insurgent candidacy against him at the convention? Very, very unlikely. The way that the superdelegates work, they're tied to the big money in the Democratic Party, uh, and they're right now with Joe Biden. Again, if these poll results come out over the next couple weeks, once the, once the debate sets in, uh, I think that then you'll see what's really happening. Right now, of course, the Biden campaign is going to say, it's just a bad night. He had a, it, it was a one-off. But the problem is, remember Corrine Jean-Pierre saying, oh, no, the Republicans in far-right media are taking clips of Biden out of character. Right. It's not out of character. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's talk about the former President Trump. He, uh, he was at least physically clearly stronger than uh, President Biden in this in this particular evening and, and at this event, CNN and other fact checkers have, have looked at what President former President uh, Trump has said. At least 30 misleading claims or lies from former President Trump on abortion, uh, what did or did not happen uh, during his administration regarding the economy, foreign affairs, unproven claims about uh, the 2020 uh, election. He also defended his actions during the January 6th insurrection and he would would not say if he'd accept the results of the 2024 election if, if it went against him can you speak to mr trump's performance well first of all trump was trump i don't know why anyone should be surprised that he would change his character now after everything we've seen since 20, 2015 but it's interesting that yes he did he did spread falsehoods he was not accurate he did say he would accept the results if the election was fair after being pressed on it. Uh, and in terms of, look, the Capitol riot, there is no good answer for that. He just, he answered it and he moved on and it is what it is, but that's baked in the cake. Mm. Anyone in America that doesn't know what Donald Trump is all about has been living in a cave for the last eight years. But doesn't that speak to his inability to reach beyond his base? If, if it's baked into the base, they've accepted and, and, and the, the base says, okay, we're okay with this guy. Doesn't he have to reach beyond that to win? He absolutely does, but 
if it's a question of the ability to string two sentences together versus someone who you know has some some questionable values and lies I don't know. I mean, again, you're putting the American voter in a very awkward position here yeah. that, frankly, I mean, look, I've traveled a lot overseas in the last month, and the people overseas say one thing. Is this the best you've got with 330 million people? Mm. It's a sad day for America well, today. Well, to that point, Matt, there are, I'm sure, many Americans waking up this morning that are embarrassed about what they witnessed last night and have real concerns about both of 100%. major party candidates. Yeah, that they're, they refer to them now as the double haters. Right. Is that they don't like either candidate. And, and it, it's Americans, voters are going to have a choice of who do they hate less. And in 2016, that was Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. In 2020, it was Joe Biden over Donald Trump. Uh, unprecedented. Again, we've never been here before. The thing that I worry about most Joe Biden is still in charge for the next seven months. We're talking about domestic consumption. What is China, Russia, North Korea, and other people who would do us wrong, how do they look at that? That doesn't portray American strength last night. President Biden's team uh, leaked during the debate that he has a cold. And is there a way for the, the Biden administration, to your point, to get him out in front of cameras doing things, answering questions, and to say, look, it was a bad performance night, but look at the performance of the administration. You know, Frank, my dad used to say, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have an excuse, any will do. <laughs> and I think that this is a classic example of, they should have said it before the debate. You don't say it during the debate. And the, the Biden campaign has kept him in a cocoon. They don't let him take freeform questions from the press. He reads off of a teleprompter. He can barely walk on and off stage. So, uh, again, they have some real problems here. They, what I would start to do if I were the Biden camp, Kamala Harris was, was very effective on TV last night. I would get surrogates out across the nation talking about the Biden record, not about Joe Biden. Yeah. But, again, presidential candidates, uh, presidential campaigns are about the person at the top of the ticket. Okay, so when it comes to policy, things that matter to the American people, to the voter, crisis at the border, inflation, national security, did either of them say anything of substance last night to, to sway any of those voters that are unsure at this point? No, on those three issues in particular, those all favor President Trump. The one issue where Democrats need to really press the point is on abortion. And Joe Biden couldn't nail down the issue. I mean, Trump was talking, was, look, the Republicans are like the, the dog that caught the mail truck. They didn't know what to do when Roe v. Wade went away because they'd been saying it should go back to the states. Mm -hmm. And now that it does, they're freaking out. But the, for the Democrats, Joe Biden didn't answer the question. There are seven states that allow abortion up to the moment of birth. And he didn't answer what the limit should be. Roe v. Wade was 23 weeks for viability. Americans support 12 to 15 weeks if you look at polling. So, I mean, it's a hot issue, but it certainly plays to the Democrats' favor. But Joe Biden couldn't drive that point home last night. And to, the, and to the, your point, many people were going after the CNN moderators for not fact-checking Donald Trump. That's the job of the candidate. That's why they didn't 100%. do it. It's up to the person facing the other candidate making those claims to fact check him and he didn't do it. Well, and CNN has a history with that. Candy Crowley fact checked Mitt Romney yeah. and she screwed up the fact check. Mm. So they're obviously very sensitive to doing that. But you're right. If the candidate can't defend his own records and call the other person out, it's not the debate moderator. They just want a good flow of conversation. Yeah. And, you know, look, the, both, both Jake Tapper and Dana Bash, they did a, a good job last night. The questions were focused. They were the right questions, and they were, they were tough questions. It's just you had one candidate who answered what he wanted to answer, and you had another candidate who I don't know what he was doing. Mm. All right. We appreciate you being here, Matt. Thanks so much. Thank you.